Nancy, I get the laughing. I'm Johnny was talking about somebody my license and I'm glad he didn't call no names. <laughs> I'll get your picture this time, David. <laughs> get you on video. Oh, yeah. Let me scoot by you here. You need to get in here. I want to get a little bit in there. I'm out here at Silk Hope Farm Heritage Park at the tobacco barn where you have two chimneys or two fire pits that burn very slow for up to three days to cure the tobacco inside of the barn. Kind of give an idea of what's going on there. These flames are tended by someone round the clock for several reasons. One, to keep the flames going and two, to make sure you don't burn the barn down. And look inside here, you'll kind of see how the heat comes through those pipes there, circles through and just slowly heats up the house to between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And where we're at right now is somewhere right about 103 to 105, which is optimal. And uh, I'm trying to set the color. It slowly turns yellow, and that yellow will turn gold. Anything goes too fast will turn dark, and it won't be a premium taste or a premium leaf. You can see the cot here of the fellas that manned the place overnight. That cot there is a little worse for wear, so anybody out there like to donate a brand new cot to the cause, we'd be happy to have it. And this here is our Pray to goodness we don't need it water barrel. This is if things get out of hand and the house starts smoking up and going to go and go into flames. So one of the questions is how do you stop the tobacco in the top of the house from overheating and just smoking because of the smoke that comes through the uh, metal flues? Well, there you go. It, uh, it's got a vent at the top and it just draws through. You can see the plethora of tin stapled to the side and where the chinking is starting to come loose. So. You can actually see daylight through some of these cracks and stuff in the uh, in between the logs. And that allows for a good airflow. And uh, that's why these barns were such high maintenance and nobody got bored back in the day because you were always re-mudding, re-chinking, or resetting logs as they'd rot out. And talking about how the drafts are made and pulled through these barns, you see the smoke and the flame being sucked into the pit. So it's got a good flow going. And that little trap door on the back helps regulate it up at the top. You can see the smoke just rolling out of the stacks up top here. And this is what they did. Just sat and tended it for a couple days and prayed for the best. Okay, so we're here at the tobacco barn. 
with Bill. Hey, with Bill. So tell me what you're doing here, Bill. We're uh, curing out the bag. So right now we've had uh, this being Tuesday. We've had four days of cooking. We started about 80 degrees. We try to stay at that temperature for quite a while. Usually it's a day or two. And we went up in increments. And right now we're up to 130. And we'll get to 170 or 180 before it's cured. And how many days total is that then? It's, uh, seven to six. It just depends on the, the, the back itself. It's it's turn it's curing good. You it's so you can tell by green. okay you can tell by looking at it yeah, like how it's, much. It's not leaving the green in. It. You oh. go too fast with the heat, you just make the green set in, and it will never cure out. And that's what we're doing. Okay, here we go. One thirty, just as even as it could be. And that barn's been holding temperature, and it's a piece of junk. The barn itself, as far as what people build stuff today, thing it ain't a thing in the world. A bunch of logs and sticks and some rocks. They ain't any much mortar in this barn. <laughs> It, it really ain't. It's got more mud than it has anything else. So huh. more mud and, and just... sticks, and and we we patch the the burner in here, which is a metal top over rock. We patch it with just simple dirt, just fill in the crack until it heats. And the heat has the metal draws that seals itself. The old barn itself you got leaks all in it, but it's a cooking barn. It would cook something that you would take a lot of money to build something that would do this today. But with this standard, that wood is some kind of insulator. Yes, sir. In itself. In now, itself. explain what we're looking at here on these leaves. Uh, this, this is, uh, this is curing out pretty good. That, that's a good color right there. See, but there's a little bit of green in that, that point right there. That's what we, that's what we're working for right now. See, see yeah. there. Now that, that, that's some of the edges on this has took the heat a little hard, but the, there's, there's so much you'll lose. Most of it you won't. Right. Most of it come out good, but that, that the back is in good shape. But there's a green stem. See it? Oh, yep. yeah. See that green stem? Yep. Uh, by tomorrow, the next day, that's the only thing will be left is green stem. Then we'll shoot the temperature up to cook that. So that's when we get up to 170, 180, and that drives that last little bit of green and moisture right in that yeah. heavy stalk or stem mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Okay. And the whole thing about it is it's being ventilated today to hold it at 130. When we started it, we closed it up tight and held it about 80 and 90, and then 95, and then on up. Right now, it's got a ventilator up back there, and we, we put much wood to it, but the cove is really holding the heat, but all that rock. Right. And all and the earth itself, of course, but mostly rock. So with the rock, the earth, and that metal pipe, that acts like a battery, stores up the heat, mm -hmm. and it keeps everything yeah. even. All yeah. right. This, this thing is actually a, a, a natural draft. Right. Ain't nothing forcing anything, but just uh, no. Because I can see daylight through the back side of it. Oh there, yeah. So. Oh yeah. There's there's places this barn needs tension right now. You know where they put that little yeah. mud there. This one has got a little bit of concrete been added to it. So what Not we need much. to do is get a bunch of folks out here with some chinking hammers and some pins and just rechink this thing one day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you just but mix up the mud and just, just smear it on in there. Yeah. yeah. Be surprised how. How crude this looks and how little work it's ever done. I don't think they've replaced anything except for whatever he repaired on the broken piece of wood today. Right. We have not put an extra piece on This is where the barn was in the How long ago was it brought in? I don't have the date. Do you know? Oh. I don't know. Four years ago, maybe? Four years? Okay. I believe that's right. So in four years, the original, it's original four years ago, the chink and everything's holding up. Still and this is the fourth year we've cooked in here. Yeah. 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 Now we replaced part of the heat. Okay. It, it was still in there to, to some. It's like where you see the that right there. It was probably added some of the later on after it was moved. Okay. I think much of it been added too. Mm -hmm. Good okay. Yeah. Hey, now I didn't see that, John. What's oh. that? Bill, you say it not. <laughs> Mike Dickens. That it can come and stay from 6 to 10 any night, any night at all. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, you want him to come tomorrow, you want him to stay tomorrow night? If he wants to do it, I'll okay. do that for somebody. Okay. All right. Uh,
Okay, Johnny, why don't you tell me what what's the purpose of this then? Of the of the uh, lumber. Yeah. Just to feed the fire to keep the temperature up in the barn. So how do you regulate the temperature? Just by paying attention to how big the fire, how much fire you've got, and uh, it looks like it's getting too hot. You just pull the slab back out a little bit, and let it cool down. If you need to speed it up, slide it back in in the coals, and it'll. It'll pick up and raise the temperature. Makes a lot of sense. Pretty simple.